Hello and welcome to this second video in a series where we're taking a look at waveforms. So hopefully you've watched the previous video. If not, there's a link in the description. And in that, we looked at a variety of different waveforms, whether they were geometric, kind of simple waveforms, or in quotes, real instrument waveforms. And we saw a number of things about them, but one of the things which we're going to be looking at today is the fact that all of those waveforms, apart from the sine wave, had a fundamental frequency, which is generally the frequency that we hear in terms of pitch, but also had harmonics present in it. And this leads us on to, in a Brian Cox style, a sort of deeper truth underneath there, which is that all of these waveforms can be reconstructed by adding together simpler waveforms. So in, in this case, what we're going to be looking at is that all of these waveforms can be remade by adding together sine waves. So sine waves of a specific frequency and amplitude, and in some cases phase, which we will look at in a bit. But that's really what's behind this. So when we break these things down into simple components and seal those harmonics, we can effectively resynthesize them by putting those harmonics together and getting back our original waveform or an approximation of it. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So let's take a look right now. So here we are in Cubase, and as you can see, I've got two 440 hertz sine waves. The frequency doesn't matter too much. It's just a convenient pitch, which isn't going to be too annoying to listen to. And if I play them both at the same time together, what we hear is effectively a sine wave. Now, I'm just going to reduce the level here so we can see them properly, and we'll see we're getting a sine wave. So you can see that just fine there. Now, if we change the phase of them, which is their time relationship, something will happen. So if I move this one along, so it starts at about where that one peaks and we play them together, we can see we're still getting a sine wave. But if we move this along, so this one peaks at the time that this one troughs, and I'm not gonna get it perfectly, I'll just get it roughly right. That will do for the moment. We can see and hear suddenly they've cancelled each other out. Now, if we zoom in, we may get them to cancel completely. So it's not exact because Supervision is showing us that something's happening at a very low level, but it's at about minus 50, maybe minus 60 dB. So it's much quieter than it would be otherwise. So they're cancelling each other out. But with different waveforms and different phase relationships and different frequencies, we would get different effects. So this is just a quick demonstration of how phase can affect a signal, even to the point of totally removing it. So that's just a brief uh, description of phase. Phasing is something which happens all the time with all frequencies. Whenever you've got multiple microphones or multiple sound sources present. Uh, yeah, let's not get too heavily into that. Let's just move on to trying to recreate some waveforms. So now let's try actually recreating a waveform from scratch using a subtractive synthesizer. So we're going to use Prolog purely because it's a synth which nearly everybody has. And if we open it up, all I've done with the settings here at the moment is I've turned the filter all the way up so it's it's not doing anything. So that central dial on the initial preset that when you load it up, that will be turned down. So we just turn that up so it's not affecting anything. Oscillator 2 and Oscillator 3 are turned down. Oscillator 1 is all the way up. And I've changed this to sine wave. And when we play this, thankfully with Prolog, we get a very pure sine wave, which is nice. It does the right thing. Just going to turn the zoom up on supervision again so we can see things a little more clearly. That'll do. Okay, so now what we're going to do is add in another waveform. So it's going to be a harmonic. So on screen at the moment, there is a harmonic series table, which shows all of the harmonics. So on the left hand side, you've got the area where there's harmonics, where it says 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 along the top. Um, and all of those harmonics are in there up to the 31st one. We won't be troubling the 31st harmonic. You can be sure of that. However, uh, 
this table on its own without semitones is a little difficult to work with because it's it's a bit of a minefield, particularly if you're not really au fait with what these intervals equate to in terms of semitones. So what I've done is at the top, I've added uh, a semitones or a semitones row rather for the semitones of each octave. And then there's also the semitones column, which shows you how many semitones you need to add for any given interval. So so just as an example, the, the first one, obviously harmonic one is is not really a harmonic. And you can see there's zero semitones to add in the top bit and zero semitones to add in the column. The third harmonic, which is the one we're interested in, so that's being highlighted on screen now. So that third harmonic needs to have 12 semitones added because it's the next octave up. And it also needs to have another seven semitones added because it's the fifth harmonic. So it's it's a G, an octave up from the original. So that's what we're now going to add in Prologue. So here we are back in Prologue and you can see I've set the course tuning to 19 semitones. And now as I play the note on the keyboard, I'm going to add in some volume. Now all of these harmonics should be lower in volume than the fundamental. They we're not going to get the balance exactly right, but you can see, if you look at the bottom right of the screen, as I add this volume in of this second harmonic or third harmonic, really, you can see we're getting our waveform is starting to change. And while we're not getting anything that looks like a square wave, we're certainly getting something that doesn't look like a sine wave either. So we can see by adding some of this in, let's go to about... 70% occasionally I will try and freeze this at the right point but the waveform we're looking for there we go is something like this where we've got this kind of sort of molar tooth shape which is being described on screen so this brings us to an important point additive synthesis is not easy to do with real physical analog synthesizers and also in many cases, VST instruments don't do it particularly well. The tuning isn't quite right. Maybe the phase between different synthesizers isn't quite right as well. So I've tried it with quite a few. Prologue is actually one of the best ones because the tuning seems to be as near as we can get it. And also the oscillators generate actual sine waves rather than something with some other harmonics in there. So to do this successfully, you would probably need a dedicated synth, but... We're just going to take a look at trying to do it in voltage modulo because it gives us a slightly better crack at it, although it's not perfect, as you'll see. But you can get an idea of how you could have done it if you were probably crazy. So here we are back in Cubase and here is voltage modular. So it's been used as a VST instrument. If you're not aware of voltage modular, it's a brilliant, brilliant uh, modular uh, synthesizer the the basic version of it is available for free uh, there's a link in the description and there are some other videos on the channel about it i'm going to just open it up here and make it as big as we can to try and fit everything on screen so what we've got here is three super oscillators placed equidistantly thus and each one of them is going to play a different pitch so the original one is connected to the original pitch this one has got a CV modifier on there, which I'm going to adjust to give it harmonic three. And this one is going to be given the right adjustments for harmonic five. So let's just put those adjustments in. So we can see here, it's slightly different here because we've got octaves. So we can just put in one octave and then we need seven semitones here to give that that fifth sound. So this oscillator is giving us that third harmonic and then for the fifth harmonic we need to be up two octaves so we can see there we're set to two octaves and we need to be four semitones so now we have those there so if i play this we can hear we're getting that sine wave and I can just use these volume controls here. So what I'm going to try and do is arrange this so we can have supervision on screen at the same time. So now with supervision on screen as well, so we can see what's happening with the waveform and the harmonics. If I play a note, you can see in here we've got a sine wave and we can see that there. Now if I bring in the harmonic here, we can see we're starting to get something which again, because we're not perfectly 
in tune. But we don't have the resolution we need here to get that exactly on so I'm going to pop that back because that's pretty close and we can probably freeze this at just the right time and there you go you can so you can see we're heading towards possibly a square wave let's add in the next one and again we've got more instability supervision's starting to look a bit shaky but hopefully if I time it just right, you can see we're getting a different waveform again. It's looking much spikier. We could carry on with that, but the problem is the higher up the harmonic series you go, the more the tuning instability really starts to wreak havoc with things. So this is probably the nearest I've got with any of the synths I've got available to me. You may have some which you can experiment with which work perfectly. If you have, please let me know in the comments and, and post a video of it working because I'd, I'd actually like to see that. But mileage has varied considerably. But what is possible is doing this using computer code. So if you spent much time looking around the slightly nerdier areas of YouTube, you'll probably have come across 3Blue, 1Brown, a channel run by an amazing mathematician called Grant Sanderson. Um, he's done some really, really inspirational videos. So even if you're not a total maths fiend, I'm definitely not. Uh, there's some really interesting stuff in there, and it's the kind of thing that you wish you'd been shown when you were doing maths at school, because it would be much more interesting than the way it was presented. One of these things is that he's created a maths animation library, which I've used to show how adding these correctly leads to the right kind of waveform. So on screen now, you can see the animation of what happens when you add these odd harmonics together and you get a square wave at the end of it. So you can see on the screen the harmonics being added up. You can see which harmonic is being added and the frequency of it as it adds and the overall waveform which is created from it. I've also created an animation of the odd and even harmonics being added together in an appropriate way. And as you can see on screen, that is generating a sawtooth. So this is recreating these complicated waveforms just from simple sine waves. There are other formulae available to add sine waves together to get other waveforms, but I'll be honest, they're slightly beyond my ability to code them accurately. I've spent far too much time creating these two as it is. But it's a very interesting idea. Now, if you want to look at the video, which is just on the top left, just briefly, this is incredible. It shows that adding up the right combination of sine waves, things going around a circle effectively, can create any shape you want. So here it's being used to create a musical note. There's another video on the channel which I've linked to which shows other things such as the outline of Britain being traced using exactly the same method. So it's incredible and the theory is that any complicated uh, waveform or shape can be broken down into that. There's a great deal to this. Say I'm not a mathematician, uh, I'm just giving you my, my basic understanding of it as somebody who's into music technology and definitely does not hold a degree in maths or higher. So now let's take a look at something which may be a little bit more familiar to you, and that is a drawbar organ. So now we're going to go slightly old school, which is to look at a drawbar organ. So here is the Hanon B70. So this is a free donationware VST instrument, and it's got drawbars. Now, drawbars now will make a lot more sense to you because these are the ones we're going to be playing with. And if I play a note, we can see, obviously, we've got some noise here. It's not a perfect sine wave, although it looks pretty signy here, but there's some noise. But as we bring each drawbar in, you will now think, oh, these are harmonics. And that's because that's exactly what they are. So when you make up a sound on a drawbar organ, what you're actually doing is choosing your own harmonic series and the balance of them. 
Now, obviously, the tuning of these isn't super perfect. You can see they're glitching around a little. I've turned off all the things like the Leslie and the reverb, etc. But this isn't designed to be some mathematical uh, additive synthesizer. It's designed to be uh, an organ simulator. So if this gave us perfect sine waves, we could create you know, maybe a square wave, etc. And that would be the ideal goal with a additive synthesizer. But this is certainly worth playing around with and... Now, whenever you look at a drawbar organ, you think, oh, actually, that's an additive synth, because that's what it is. Now, this brings me on to the topic of additive synths. You're probably expecting to see one at this point. Um, the reason you're not is because I couldn't find one which was cross-platform, free, and, and simple. So you can find two of those three, Pretty much no problem, but finding all three uh, has been something that's evaded me. If you found something, please comment in the description. It would be good to see it, but I spent quite a while looking, downloaded quite a few synths. None of them none of them did what I wanted, which was really just effectively a drawbar organ with sine waves. There we go. Um, the ones which were were 32-bit Windows-only VST2 plugins, which were created with synth edit, so I didn't bother playing around with those too much uh but that's that just seems to be where we are commercial ones tend to add loads of bells and whistles so if you look at something like loom the idea is that it's a, an additive synth but it's kind of buried under a whole load of bells and whistles and things which maybe don't help you understand what's going on but that's where we are with that so this video has really been to just give you an idea that waveforms are maybe not what we initially think of them and that there's perhaps a, a more simple, deeper truth underneath what makes them up, that they are a series of sine waves vibrating at different frequencies. Uh, whether or not that actually is the case is kind of a philosophical debate. I always used to posit the idea of aliens who had a different hearing system from us who could hear each individual harmonic individually and when presented with a square wave would hear 40 or 50 different frequencies rather than our limited understanding of it where we just think of it as one tone with a, a root frequency which we hear, the fundamental. But, but that's by the by. Uh, I strongly encourage you to watch more Three Blue, One Brown videos because there's some really interesting stuff in there. Say, so you don't have to be a mathematician. I'm definitely not. But having some appreciation of some of the beauty and clear descriptions of these things can open up a world of understanding of different things to do with uh, all sorts of areas of life. As ever, I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition. <laughs>